Okay, Derbyites, let's talk about the Golden Globe race for Best TV Comedy Series. We know that these HFPA voters like the new stuff, so that means we're going to look closely at some of the new shows. Uh, but also they like um, uh, the veterans, too. So let, let's start, first of all, with the breaking news in this, in this category. We had learned from Chris Beecham, our senior editor, who teamed up with you, Marcus, to break the news about the Netflix series. Take it away. Yeah, Orange is the New Black. It's not going comedy as they previously you know, thought that it might. It's now going drama. So everyone go change your predictions right now. Um, at Gold Derby, we had it in, in comedy, and it was actually tied for first place. And now that it's going drama, we're going to have to reevaluate, you know, make sure. We, we, we're going to give everyone a couple days before we make, you know, an official prediction of how how it's doing now in the comedy race, but it's kind of kind of a big story, don't you guys think? I mean, they already have House of Cards, Netflix does, and this seemed like it was going to be their their comedy version of House of Cards. They were going to have two you know titans of, of these new shows, but now they're they're kind of competing against each other. Right. So what's up, what's out front to win, Rob? Oh. You know, it's really difficult to say because this Orange is the New Black story has just kind of changed everything. I thought it was going to be an absolute shoe into winning comedy, and now it obviously has a more difficult uh, road ahead of it in drama. I'm still predicting it to be nominated, and I'm predicting Taylor Schilling as well. But just uh, looking over at my predictions uh, very quickly in comedy, I think um, I actually think Veep is in front. I have that at the top. I just think that is a kind of show that. Um, Hollywood foreign press voters would tend to like, um, but it's a, it, this ca category is a real toss-up because, as we all know, uh, shows like Louis and Episodes and Thirty Rock are not actually eligible and won't be in the running this year. So, you know, it could be Modern Family again, it could be Girls, it could be something new. Um, but at the moment, I have Beep up there. I don't know if that's silly or not. What do you girls think? won last year. Right. You're a big fan of Mom, right, uh, Rob? I am. Personally yeah, speaking. I'm, personally speaking, and that's only in the last two days because um, one of our <laughs> one of our really good um, forum posters, Tony Ruiz, he's been writing to me and, and suggested after his article on Gold Derby about Alice and Janney, um, suggested that I should probably see the show. I would never would have watched the show like that. I'm not really a big fan of um, like the multicams, but I watched all the episodes that have aired so far, and I love it. I love it. It's the only show that makes me laugh out loud throughout the whole thing. It's very, very funny. And Alice and Janney, she is, well, I was going to say a revelation, but she's not really a revelation because we all know how brilliant of an actress she is, and she's a multi-Emmy winner, and I don't even know if she's won Golden Globes. Probably not. But um, I think that she is so in the running now for a Golden Globe in the supporting mishmash category for mom. Um, I wish I wish I could say mum because I just feel ridiculous saying mom. <laughs> being uh, an Aussie yourself, yes. Being, an, being Australian, yeah. um, you know, us Commonwealth people, apart from Canadians, you they also say mom. Um, find the find the word mom to be ridiculous. But that's you know, that's just me. So I'll just, I'll say uh, mom. Um, and I think that is going to get nominated as well, the show, and I think Anna Faris will also be nominated in the lead actress race. Okay, now Charlie, of all the new shows, Mom, Mom is a hot contender. It, can it win, or, or do you think among the new shows only? Let's focus on that for a moment. What do you think is most uh, appealing to those HFPA folks? Of the new shows, I would probably say. Well, first of all, I would have. I'd like to say I live at a Commonwealth as well, Rob, Virginia. <laughs> right. <laughs> and we say Mom like it should be pronounced. And, yeah, um, uh, I do. I think uh, the. I think probably the one that they would probably most respond to is uh, the crazy ones. I think that one is probably out front. Veep could be out front, but it wasn't even able after Emmy wins the previous the previous year, this past Golden Globes. Now it wasn't even able to capitalize on that. It lost uh, to girls on both fronts. So I don't think that. Uh, I, I mean, I I could see it getting nominated. I don't know if I could see it winning. Uh, I think the crazy ones is the one that's. Uh, up there is the one that's really up there right now. It's really been a hit with uh, viewers. A lot of people were underestimating it going in, which actually has made its success all the more apparent. And Robin Williams seems like he's probably out front to win the uh, Globe for a uh, uh, comedy actor because that that category is very very weak this year, with three of last year's uh, people not even going to be there this year. So, uh, and, and he's an old Globes darling, of course, right? He's won a ton of these things. Five. 
and the wow. DeVille Award. Mm. That's right, that's right. Including right. In, in 1992, they created a cat, they, they gave him a special Golden Globe for his role as the genie in Aladdin. Right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> they did that's too. Awesome. Wow. Riley, you what are you, Riley, I've been here. What do you like? Uh, how are you sizing up this race for best comedy series? I think we're having tech problems again with poor Riley. Uh, his, yeah. his webcam keeps freezing here. Uh, Rob, you've got Brooklyn Nine Nine, whatever that whatever that thing is, in your yeah. top five too. That's why do you think they're going to go for that? Oh, look, I, that's been a holdover for me for the last few weeks. I, I predicted it as soon as the Prediction Centre was um, enlivened, and I was almost going to take it out last night because a few weeks ago it kind of was hot. Like People were talking about it. It was funny. It had a couple of really, really strong episodes, episode four and five, but no one's been talking about it ever since that time, and I'm almost thinking about taking it out and putting in the crazy ones. I know it seems silly not to have the crazy ones in my top five, but Brooklyn Nine-Nine does have pedigree behind it. Um, you know, it has... It, it's funny, and it's done pretty well for itself on Fox. So, you know, I'm on shaky ground here. I just think there hasn't been much of the new class that have been really impressive this season, which is really sad for comedy. Like, apart ah, from the you're crazy... wrong. Come on. And, and uh, from an awards context, you're wrong. Marcus Dixon, they love Michael J. Fox in Hollywood, right? No, oh, God. And they love... And I don't care what you think of the show. We're talking awards possibilities here. Mm. Marcus, do you think there's any chance it gets nominated for uh, show and for him? For show, I don't think so. For him, absolutely. I actually had him winning up until I think yesterday when I realized, you know, the buzz on that show is so low that I don't think he can win with that little amount of buzz. Robin Williams, in my mind, is going to win this, and I, I should just change my 500 point bet right now to be him. <laughs> um, I didn't know that thing about the genie for Aladdin. They gave him a special award for that. That's, I mean, that tells you right there that they love this guy so much. They create awards for him to win. I think I think it's a done deal. Robin Williams is going to win. He's going to take out Michael J. Fox. Um, and it, it is a, a really, really good show, The Crazy Ones is. And Charlie was right. They, there was no expectations going into this. I actually... I you know, struggled to watch it. I didn't want to watch it. And once I did, I loved it. It has the <laughs> David, David E. Kelly pedigree. He won for Alan McBeal two years in a row at the Golden Globes. Um, they love David E. Kelly shows, and so do I. One other thing I wanted to uh, uh, just bring up as well is that, um, uh, and this is in regard to uh, Mom, at least in, in, in regard to it possibly winning, uh, it, the problem there is that I don't think the glo if if I remember, if I'm remembering correctly the Globes haven't gone for a multicam show since the emergence of single camera comedies. Uh, I think since Ally McBeal and Sex in the City they haven't gone for they haven't gone for a multicam show at least in the series category really in any of the comedy categories. That's when Jim Parsons won his Golden Globe, it was a bit of a surprise because they don't normally go for that type. They, haven't, they hadn't gone for that type of show in quite a while. I'm looking right now. The last time a multi-cam won was 1996, Third Rock from the Sun. Really? Wow. After that, 97, 98 was Ally McBeal, and then Sex in the City, Curb Enthusiasm, The Office, Desperate Housewives, Ugly Betty, Extras, 30 Rock, Glee. Glee won twice, and then Modern Family, and then Girls. So you're right. Well, there you go. But I, I don't think Mom is going to win, but I just I, I have a feeling that it might be a little surprise and, and actually get nominated. And, and I completely, and I say to Tom, bow, bow, Michael J. Fox show is not <laughs> um, as good as you, as, doesn't have this, the, uh, the chops. It just doesn't have it. I'm sorry. To, it, the buzz is so low. It's deafening. It's so, oh, it's not deafening. It's the opposite well, of deafening. Well, shall we, shall we quote two of our senior editors <laughs> who are not on this webcam, but who would seriously disagree with you, Mr. LaCuria? Your okay. dear buddy, Chris Beecham, has Michael J. Fox in second, take that. Daniel uh -huh. Montgomery has Michael J. Fox in second, take that. Now, are you at all humbled by hearing that? <laughs> Not at all, mate. Not <laughs> at all. I, I, have so. him, I have him in my predictions as well because that category is is really dismal. There's not that many guys in the running. I mean, they're not going to go for Jake Johnson and New Girl, surely. And who else is uh, there? I just don't, I don't. I don't. It's unfortunate. There's probably more women. A probably... couple of you guys do. I do, yeah, I have been. Um, Andre yeah, Brown. He's the kind of sexy surprise. superstar they like too. Uh, 
uh, I'm not sure he has the gravitas, but we have to remember, remind everybody here, who, who look who won last year was Don Cheadle for House of Lies, and we're all going, well, where did that come from? And who was it among you who said, uh, that's easy time, we knew it, he was going to win all along because he's the movie star in the category. And the minute I heard that, I went, of course, uh, right. they're just suckers for that. At the and who's the movie star this year? It's Robin Williams. He's an Oscar winner. Um, you know, yeah. speaking of, of la in this category last year, Don Cheadle did win. Um, Jim Parsons won a couple years earlier. And the other three that were nominated last year were Louis C.K. He's he's not even eligible this year. Matt LeBlanc, he's not eligible. And Alec Baldwin, he's not eligible. So three of last yeah. year's nominees are, are out. So that means we're going to get three new people. I think we're all in agreement. It's going to be Robin Williams, Michael J. Fox, and who's the third? Who's, who is going to get... The other I think Sandberg. Nominee. Say that again. I think Andy Sandberg. I just think of all the others, really? he probably has the best chance. Yeah. Well, uh, Daniel Montgomery has uh, Stephen Merchant there from Hello Ladies. That's an HBO show. They like the newcomers. Uh, uh, and they like him. For, <laughs> and they like the office and extras. So it wouldn't be that surprising yeah. to see him in there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so, I mean, there's a lot of fluidity in this. In well, this Ricky race. Gervais has has a new show on Netflix. It's called Derek. Derek. That's right. Is that eligible? I yeah. would assume so. Yeah. Of course. Um, oh, there was some speculation that that may have been behind the the Netflix move to get uh, Orange Is the New Black out of that category. But in fact, what was behind their decision, of course, was strong belief by the producers of that show that it's really a drama. So they have to defer to that. Yeah, I must say I'm still really, really surprised and reeling by this news. Um, I hope it works out for them, but I'm really surprised. And you know what? It, it's going to get a lot of people talking at least because it's been a topic of discussion for months. Is Orange is the New Black a comedy or a drama? And you can, it's like evenly split. There are people who think that it's one way and there are people that think that it's another way. I personally, um, some, I'm wavering. There's some episodes that are really dramatic and some episodes that are quite funny. So... You know, I think there are arguments to be made for both sides. I'm just really surprised that they actually went ahead and did that, given that drama yeah. categories are so competitive. They've got guts. I think if they had stayed in comedy, they would have for sure got a nomination. Yeah. And they're not taking the easy road, and you have to respect that. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm Marcus, like, you have not updated your predictions. Shame on you. I'm looking at your, your predictions look like <laughs> Swiss cheese at all these holes in the knot. It shows no, in the knot. I did it about an hour ago, so maybe it's not updated yet. But, oh, uh, okay. Well, good, you, well, for now, so so what, what is actually in your first place now that uh, the contenders have shifted? For, for comedy series, I, I moved up. No. No. Go ahead. Yeah. Give me, yeah give me your predictions for comedy series, actor and actress. Okay, comedy series, I moved up the crazy ones. I had to remove Orange is the New Black. And cra the crazy ones is just kind of a placeholder right now until something better comes along. But as far as I know, that's... Hold your breath. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then I have I have Girls in number two just because it won last year. I have Modern Family in number three because it won two years ago. And then, you know, just like Rob, I love Veep. I have Veep in fourth place. I would love to put it higher, but it's, it's going to be hard to get a nomination because it was snubbed last year. Yeah. And then in fifth, Charlie, place, oh, good. fifth place, I have the Big Bang Theory. Uh, Charlie, uh, Tony Ruiz, uh, all known as Opera Junkie in our forums, wrote a, this piece that Rob referenced a few minutes ago in which he said, the race is already done for comedy actors. This is Alice and Janney's for mom. Do you buy that? Well, comedy actress? Yes. Because I thought she was going supporting. So, oh, she is going supporting. Oh, yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's right. That's right. So, so Excuse that, me. I made a stupid call to She's going to be mashed up with uh, all the, uh, you know, miniseries and movie people, including, uh, uh, what's her, what's her name, uh, the, 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 the British one who always wins, uh, Maggie Smith. Um, uh, well, let's uh, just call her the British one that always wins, okay? <laughs> I feel like Kate Winslet when she couldn't remember Angelina Jolie's name and called her the other one. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, but yeah, she's going to be in that category, and you know that category is so unpredictable. You know, I remember a couple of years ago when Jane Lynch was the hottest thing on Glee, and she lost to Chloe Sevigny for Big Love, which came out of nowhere. <laughs> and yeah. it was, it was, and not that she's she she was she's always been great on Big Love. It's just it just came out of nowhere because yeah. no one was talking about that show anymore. So I mean, it, that's what they do. One, yeah, it's exactly with that one. It's anyone's guess. Um, uh, and uh, by the way, to Tony, I, I saw the webcast he did with you guys. He was great. And uh, if 
I, I, I don't know about comedy actress. I think there's a possibility Amy Poehler, this could be finally her year to break through, at least with the Globes for Parks and Rec. Uh, I think uh, it, it might just be, it, there might just, there's no real person who has, you know, a lot of buzz going around them, like, oh, like uh, like a couple of years ago when we thought Zoe Deschanel had all the buzz, and then uh, Laura Dern ended up winning for Enlightened, um, wow. or last year when when Lena Dunham won. Uh, so I think she would be naturally the person to go to. With Sarah Michelle Gellar, though, Marcus, you've got her in first place. She's yeah. got the superstar appeal. She's been around forever. The Globe voters know her, you know, have known her for 15 years. Uh I, I could see that happening. What's your thinking? It's it's kind of a weird prediction because I think most people aren't even predicting her. But I think if she gets nominated, she has a really, really good chance of winning this. She's young, she's beautiful, and that those are two things that the Globe voters always go for. <laughs> most, yeah, most how could I forget also, uh, uh, how could I forget Julia Louis-Dreyfus, of course, uh, who, who, who was nominated last year, did not win, she lost to Lena Dunham, uh, and the the show is still very uh, very popular. If the um, I don't think last year was a fair barometer because Girls was so hot. But if the Globes voters really do like Veep, this is their chance. Mm -hmm. And and on, on Sarah Michelle Gellar very quickly. Um, it's it's no secret that most of the critical noise about the crazy ones is very negative about her and the show. But um, she is still a big. Hollywood star, and I must you must remember, and I'll never forget this, the Globe voters nominated her once for Buffy, um, back when we were all screaming, everyone was like, when are the Emmy voters going to recognize this show? Uh, they never did recognize her, but the Globe voters did once, and I'll never forget it because I thought it was a really, really great moment to see her nominated for one of the greatest roles for women on TV ever, and so maybe they might go back to the well and nominate her again, that's a good point. Now let's go to Riley here. You've had some webcam troubles. You're going in and out, in and out. Yes. Now that you're in, let's, let, let's, let's hear from you. What, what, what's your thinking on this whole uh, comedy side? Uh, just the whole thing in general? or Whatever. Pick a race. Uh, actor, actress, race. series. What do you think? Okay, so I have uh, Robin Williams getting in for the crazy ones. Uh, but I don't have anything in for anything else. I'm not sure how popular the crazy one is outside the gold derby forum, pretty much. Uh, I, I think it's a funny show, and like a lot of us do, but it doesn't have any critical buzz, which is necessary for uh, awards, but the Golden Globes, they do like to award like hot uh, new things. And I'm not sure that many people consider this very hot. Uh, Robin Williams, who does have the name recognition, though, uh, so I think he will win. Uh, for comedy actress, I think it'll be Julia Louis-Dreyfus after having lost before. For comedy series, I have no idea what's going to win, so I'll just say Beef as well, since I usually underestimate that. So. Uh, that was awesome. You guys, so, some of you guys said Anna Ferris. That's who's actually the lead for Mom in your nominees, yeah. right? Some, somebody have any? Anybody having a thought about her? Yeah, I have her predicted. I think she's 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 a revelation for me because I've never really been a big fan of her work. I've never really been that familiar with it. And watching the show, she really holds it together. She's great in that show. She has good writing behind her, great performance. She really just lets herself go, and she's all over the place. And I think that she could be a surprise because she is a name. People know Anna Faris. She's been around long enough, and the, the uh, voters do like their young, pretty um, nominees. So I think she's definitely got a chance. We got, we got uh, some, go ahead. I, I have kind of a procedural question for the Golden Globe. If you submitted a supporting, could, could you change the following year to go lead? Because I think the Modern Family people need to do that. They've never won a Golden Globe, any of the cast members of Modern Family. Yeah. So now that they're going into the fifth season here, they need to change up their strategy if they want to win. Because obviously what they're doing is not working. Um, yes. those, those supporting categories of the Globes are so you know, full of comedy people, drama people, movie people, supporting people. 
And, you know, we always talk about modern family fatigue, but at the Golden Globe, that doesn't exist. It's only one, one Golden Globe for best comedy, never for any of the actors. In the right, right, right. But they've got this whole this whole mantra that they spew all the time about, oh, we're a family at Modern Family, and there's none of us are, you know, are going to grandstand over the other cast members, so therefore uh, we all have to go supporting. It's all that crock of uh, pretending to have humility, which no, no star in Hollywood has. Right, Charlie? No comment. <laughs> <laughs> You're still hoping for them all to be your best buddy. Okay. Well, just Jesse Tyler Ferguson. I'm, I'm, but that's beside the point. What um, I think it's just, I think it's just hopeless for any of the actors to win at this point because, at least with the Globe mindset, it's, it's just not a, uh, it's just, it's just not a hot show anymore. It's not one that people... It just won the about. Emmy. Where were you last month, two months ago? Two groans and groans. Okay? <laughs> yeah, I but agree. But it won and it won for the... Does what, it... Billion, but this is the Globes. It, does it make it? <laughs> the Globes are not the Emmys. They will not They will not give it to Modern Family again, I mean, again, it took surely. them three years just to give it a series trophy, for God's sake. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm not even predicting it for comedy series. You are? What you're thinking? No, uh, I don't know. It's it's kind of old at this point. Like a show in its fifth season, that doesn't really get nominated for Golden Globes, does yeah. it? Yeah. No. Well, you know what? You know another point. Um, just to change the subject briefly. Chris reminded us that Smash is still eligible, Yay. but they hate yeah. voting. They hate voting for cancelled shows. <laughs> is that? Does that have a chance in hell? I've never no, seen it. No, I've never watched no. a show, but it's out. It's gone. What are you laughing at? I'm going to eject you from this hangout. It's a great show. You're warped by the critics. Don't pay any attention. It's a smash. I'm, not, smash. I'm just still remembering two years ago at the Emmy, or what was it, last year at the Emmys, you were just, yeah. you were all gung-ho. It was going to get nominated. Oh, and was I really? Uh, yeah, yeah, yes, you were. I've convened an amnesia. Thanks a lot but for it did get, it did me. Get no, it did get nominated at the Globes. It got nominated, so... Tom, you should feel vindicated there, and, and but it's not going to be nominated again, only because it's cancelled. Because if it wasn't cancelled and it was still, you know, uh, holding on by its fingernails, its, its pink nail polish coated fingernails, <laughs> it probably would have been nominated again because that's what the Globe voters like. They like stuff like that. Let's right. also not forget Glee. Glee won twice. Right. Uh, it actually it was snubbed last year, but they had a a big you know big storyline this year with the, the death of Cory Monty. And if there's yep. anyone in the Hollywood foreign press that still has any kind of love for that show, they're going to put it high up on their list. Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. I, I disagree with that. I think that once the show is out, it's out. The reason Smash and Glee get all this extraordinary attention is, remember what the categories are called. They're called comedy slash musical, and any shows that have music in them tend to do very well in here. Maybe it's because they're looking at that musical word when they're inking their ballots, and they go, oh, we said that for them, but a show that has the music in it. <laughs> right. uh, you know, <laughs> I don't know, but uh, Riley, <laughs> do you ever observe any real trends at the Globes that we should pay attention to that we don't observe at the Emmys, let's say? In other words, what's your cheat sheet when, look, when trying to size up the Globes? Like Honestly, I try not to uh, look at any trends at the Globes because I think there are probably better things to do with my time. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Wow. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Now, Charlie, you're very uh, savvy about noticing these trends. What trends do you tend to notice, other than the fact that they like newcomers and all of that? What else? If you're an amateur awardsologist here, what do you look for for Globe TV Awards? Oh, well, let me see here. Let me just uh, stroke my beard here for a second. <laughs> and see if I can... Wow. Uh, um... Uh, I, I think what they're gonna that they like they like to single out the people who are who who have a presence early on and and they like to to give them that attention you know Max Greenfield and New Girl Jane Lynch and Glee uh, even in the second season of Glee Chris Colfer who they get who actually won uh, it, they like finding that and I think what's going to be interesting to see is if any one of those people, if anyone gets a nomination like that, and I think one person that might is James Walk uh, for The Crazy Ones. He's someone who's had a really standout past couple of years on you know shows like Happy Endings, Political Animals, and this past season of Mad Men, he played the great character Bob Benson, who, you know, his presence on that show got a lot of people talking, 
uh, about Mad Men in the way that it had it had kind of been lacking in for several for a couple seasons. So and on this show, he gets to be silly. He actually is really Robin Williams' sparring partner on a lot of yeah. comedic things. Yeah. So he really and he really holds his own on there. He's great. So and, and of course he's he's young and he's hot and everybody just loves him. I think he's going to get nominated and uh, uh, depending on the competition, uh, he could very easily be making his way onto that stage that evening. I agree, totally agree with that. But like Here's last year, go ahead. Like last year, that slot went to Dan Houston on Magic yeah, City. That's what I mean. They do so silly like, things. They do know. really weird stuff. But James Walk is a big. Big story. He's so good in that show. He's the he's one of the best things about it, and I could totally see them nominating him. Um, definitely. One of the trends we often forget about at the Globes is they also love the veterans. Remember, Kelsey Grammer came back late, late, late in the the run of Frasier. Was it even the last year? And he won Best uh, Comedy Actor. And I was backstage at the Globes uh, when it happened, and there was this this whoa, what the hell was that? And it's a powerful reminder that that we shouldn't write off contenders just because they've been around for. They like the old soldiers, don't they? They do. That's yeah. true. He, yeah. He also even someone for boss. Yeah. Yeah. He did. And, yeah, and I mean, someone like um, you know, during The Sopranos, Edie Falco has won twice, but it wasn't consecutive. She won when the first show first came out, and then several years later, uh, in two thousand four, she won uh, a second one. Which uh, which w caught a lot of people by surprise. I predicted it, and I'm actually being honest about that. Uh, but thank you. But and remember, she had laryngitis. She couldn't even speak when she was on stage. It was insane. But um, you know, it, it, they, they like that sometimes. They really latch on to something. Um, can I just raise also this? If we were talking about Emmys, we would be having the usual. We'd, we'd trot out this usual discussion about how Big Bang Theory is the biggest show on TV, and it's on eight times a day. And it's going to it's going to get nominations across the board. Kaylee Cuoco and Simon Helberg and blah blah blah. And then it never really eventuates. But what about the Globes? Because don't they still love to go back to the well when a show is really really big and they've nominated it before? Because I think I might have made a bit of a mistake with my predictions. I don't see it anywhere apart from Jim Parsons. Could it be that this year that show really breaks through again, or more so, and we see people like Kaylee Cuoco maybe? Or Mayim Bialik in the supporting mishmash, or um, the show being nominated again and maybe being even a front runner. Do, does it have any chance? Who wants I to could, jump on that? I could see that happening. I'm, I have it predicted for best comedy series and for best actor. Um, I guess if it were ever to happen, it would happen this year. Now that it's the most watched comedy on on TV, and Jim Parsons just won an Emmy, so he's still relevant within the awards circuit. But Marcus, uh, was the show nominated show last year? Was Big I... Bang nominated for comedy series? Yeah, it was nominated. Yeah, it was. It was. Oh, it was. Yes. Okay, okay. I could absolutely yeah, see actually, it. Uh... <clears throat> oh, no, go on. Uh, I was going to say it was nominated in 2010. It was snubbed in 2011, and it came back in 2012. So it's just weird. They, they loved it, they hated it, and they loved it. Hey, now Riley's figured out how to do the uh, the Chiron here. How did, how did you figure that in Google Hangouts? Uh, you have to install this thing called the Hangout Toolbox. So if you go to the side and you click uh, Add Apps, then... Uh, okay. okay. I think right. I sent a link in the chat box earlier. Okay, we'll have to explore that. It's pretty cool. Yes. I think it's, uh, back to the, the Big Bang Theory, i got to say, I think that that is very, for series at least, I think it's very possible. Um, also because there's no clear front runner for series for comedy series right now at the Globes, so I could definitely see it because it's relevant, it's popular, it's occupying every half hour that's not devoted to Family Guy on TBS, <laughs> um, uh, which is yeah. So I I I, th I could definitely see it winning. There you go. Any, anybody else have final thoughts here? Oh, uh, can I say one more thing? Um, how, you know, no one's talking about Arrested Development. Is it not eligible? What's the story there? Because oh, it's eligible, if, yeah. Because before the I'm Emmys, we all thought it was going to be huge, right? We all thought Arrested Development was going to be the big story at the Emmys, and the Emmys, cl Emmy voters clearly did not like that show, but maybe Globe voters do like it. They've nominated it before when it was on Fox. Could that be Netflix's big chance in the comedy races, perhaps? 
I, I hope so. Know. It's it's one of my favorite shows of all time. And when it got snubbed by the critics earlier this year, and then it got snubbed by the Emmys, I think people just lost hope. And I think to nominate it now, you're just wasting a prediction because it's probably not going to happen. I mean, I, I, uh, it, it's never been as much. We always had hope for it at the Emmys because the Emmys were the show that really helped keep it on and keep that momentum going for it when it was still, you know, on on the brink of cancellation when it won comedy series. Um, the following year at the Globes did win Best Actor for Jason Bateman, but it never won series. Uh, none of the other actors, I believe, ever got nominated. Uh, it, 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 it would be a welcome presence, but I don't uh, see it happening. I just feel like it's too hip for those old fogies at the Hollywood Press. <laughs> yeah, I think Jason cool. Bateman has a good chance at a uh, nomination because he's kind of a movie star now, so like that's a good narrative mm-hmm. that they like. Oh, yeah. yeah, he could be that, that fifth nominee that all of a sudden wins. Yeah. There you go. Do we have this all figured out now? Did you at the beginning? Or? Um, no, we didn't. Um, Chris, Chris Beecham is reminding us that um, the SAG committee is has determined that 30 Rocket was eligible um, for this year, but Golden Globes are not so, change your predictions if you put it in, you know, Gold Globes. I don't even think it was eligible, but it, it will be nominated or eligible at the SAG Awards. Mm-hmm. So that means it'll get in. Yeah, Alec Baldwin at least. Probably. Yeah, all right, good. Well, we uh, still don't know what the hell is going on in the commie races, but I think I right. feel a bit more confident that, <laughs> um, is, you know. Is New Girl going to be shut out? Do you guys think it will be nominated for anything? No, or I don't think so. Has this time passed? Yeah, I think it, I think they're done with new Where? girl. Uh, it's old girl now. Or? Old girl. <laughs> I think Thank Zoe you. will still get nominated. I mean, Tuesdays and Thursdays, try the veal. <laughs> <laughs> I think Zoe will still get nominated. Really? Okay. Yeah. Um, and I I don't know if she'll win, but uh, hey, anything's possible. There's a campaign slogan. Right. <laughs> hey, anything's possible. <laughs> okay, you guys, uh, we're running out of steam. I, uh, we're going to uh, come back and keep tracking these races uh, and, and do what we do best at Gold Derby. That is, uh, we're anti award snobbery here. While everyone else is tracking the Oscar races exclusively, we care about all of the major awards, including the TV ones. So thank you guys for joining us. We will pick this up again very soon.